Hey everyone, today's episode is with one of my dear friends and also the creator of the What We Crave Emotional Eating Summit. Her name is Erin Smith. She's been on the show before telling us about the summit, but I wanted her to come back on today because I was like, girl, you have to share your story. It is, there are so many people in this boat right now. And so she agreed to come on and share. And what I mean by that is Erin was showing me a picture of herself Um, this was right before I had met her and she looked like she was like six or seven months pregnant, honestly. And, and she wasn't fat. It was not fat at all. She's very tall and lean and it was from gut issues. And as we got more into her health story, I was like, dang, the path you have been on. So many people have been on, um, and she's healed from that now. And so I wanted her to come on and share that. So if you've been, I think anybody who's basically like followed any sort of diet or try to go down that road and have experienced things not working, I think will relate to this issue. But specifically, if you've had issues with your gut health or, um, just feeling like that adrenal fatigue type feeling where you're chronically stressed and nothing's working. And I think you're going to really love this episode because she talks into, she talks about at the end, like what, what actually works and it's probably not going to be what you're expecting. And so I'm excited for you guys to hear that. Um, because she's one of my good friends. She also was so nice to like allow me to voice and share some of my feelings about, um, dietary dogma, I guess, you know, and some of the information that I share in my upcoming book, short-term keto, by the way, if you guys haven't pre-ordered that, I would love for you to, to read the book and experience what I've really, really worked hard to bring something excellent to you guys. And it's all about, um, why keto is cool, but why I don't think you should do it forever. So that's for sale on, um, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Indigo pre-sale it, um, releases on December 21st. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive in now, please. Aaron's what we crave there. It's launching, relaunching again on November 2nd. So I'll put a link in the show notes. If you want to watch what we crave, we talk about that at the end. It's just so many amazing experts about health, talking about emotional eating, but also just the basic tenets of health to help keep you from getting into that place. She's very connected in the industry. She's worked for, you know, Dr. Pompa and Dr. Zach Bush and some really great people. And so she's brought all those awesome connections to you guys. So you can have an amazing resource to so make sure you check that out. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into Aaron's crazy story. I think you guys will have fun hearing us jive about this super common experience in health. And thank you to Aaron for being vulnerable enough to share it. Um, let's go ahead and jump in. Here's Aaron Smith. Okay. Before we jump into the show, I've got a special announcement real quick, and it is about my higher retreats. We are finally rolling on this. This is a project that's been in the work for two years for me, and we are finally going. Our first higher retreat is going to be in April in Zion's National Park. I don't know if you've ever been to Zion, but oh man, it's in Southern Utah. It is incredible. Check out my Instagram for pictures if you haven't seen. It is just like one of the most magical places in the world. People come from all over the world to see this place. Um, So we are going to be doing it there April 21st through 24th, 2022. And I wanted to let you guys know we are still in our early bird pricing right now. Um, We sold a lot of it. We filled more than half the retreat in our pre-sale, but we still have one shared room left. So if you want to come with somebody and save some money, jump on that. Um, I am doing this with Be The Wellness. They are helping me put on this retreat. Be The Wellness is amazing. They are like my dream end goal of all retreats. And they have decided to help other people like me put on retreats. So it's going to be phenomenal. They're award-winning retreat um, hosts. And yeah, it's it's going to be good. So you have to go to their website. It's going to be Be The Wellness. So B-E-E. Make sure you follow them on Instagram, by the way, also. But B-E-E, The Wellness, be thewellness.com slash experiences slash hire. All of the details are there. You have pricing. Um, you can register right there on the website. All of the schedule, all of the people who are coming. We have a shaman coming to do a fire ceremony the first night. There's an amazing yoga, meditation, breath work facilitator. Catherine Dixon, who is like, I don't know what to call her, my like spiritual guide in life. <laughs> um, she is facilitates the work of Byron Katie and she has an episode here on inside out health. I would highly suggest listening to that. She is a life changer. She's going to be facilitating, um, two days at the retreat. So I'm so excited to have Catherine coming. She's like my secret weapon. She's amazing. So, um, yeah, all the details are on that website. Go check it out. Take advantage of the early bird pricing we have going, um, for the next, uh, week and a half. So that will end on, I guess maybe it's a little less than that by the time you hear this. That ends on August 8th at 8 p.m. So 888, okay? August 8th at 8 p.m. Mountain Time is when the early bird pricing ends. So if you want to get in on that, get in on that now. Um, And yeah, if this is something that's pinging, if you feel like you need a reset, connect to nature, 
connect with like-minded people, take a look inside at what you got going on and leave with some tools on how to control your stress response and challenge your stressful thoughts and find out what might be going on inside of you that you're just not seeing. This is going to be amazing. We have a sh private chef coming, all gourmet paleo meals. It's going to be incredible. So um, yeah, check that out. Bethewellness.com slash experiences slash hire. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test. There's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of, exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios right. So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Okay, guys, I'm so excited to bring you my, one of my best friends, Aaron Smith here. And you know, this podcast was really inspired by, <laughs> a picture that you showed me while we were on a trip one time of you basically looking like you were like six or seven months pregnant. I love you, girl. I hope I, you're the one who said it. Mm -hmm. but, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and you weren't, and it wasn't because you were fat. It was not because you were fat. Can you explain why you look this way in the picture? Yeah. Let's just throw it up. Well, if in case people are watching, yeah, too. watch um, on YouTube, yeah. guys. check this so, out. So no, I'm not pregnant guys. This is uh, this is me a uh, two and a half years ago um, at my worst um, with emotional eating and so many other things, which we're going to talk about, but yeah, um, this was leaky gut and stress and a, yeah, just a massive cascade of stuff that I was pretty um, completely unaware of at the time, um, which now I I'm much more aware now, but, uh, yeah, it was a massive wake up call for me. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. And I love that. We were like, <laughs> you were, you were talking about, this is nuts. And you were like, literally it, it actually was nuts. Can you, <laughs> can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, you guys. So, um, at the height of this, this was, I was on keto doing keto the wrong way. Um, <laughs> I had the dogma of, well, fat doesn't make you fat. So like you can eat all the things and like eat all the nuts, eat all the coconut butter, I'll eat all the fat bombs and everything. And so I had done that again, we'll get in my story, but I had done that so many times for probably two years straight. And so anytime, and those damn keto erythritol, like cookies that are, are right. you know, just those snacks. And this is what would happen to me. And I would just be like, oh, it's okay. It's just, bloatedness. It'll calm down. You know, I was completely unaware that this was so much more than that. And yeah, so yeah, much so, nuts. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this is like, what year was this Aaron? Oh gosh. This was, um, yeah. Two and a half years ago. Um, or almost three. Maybe so yeah. Somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Which is like, this is right when I started developing my do keto, not forever message, because I was starting to see like the messaging in the keto space was just like, fat is the ultimate fuel. It's the only thing you really should be eating. Just eat, eat more. You need to eat more fat. If you're not, just, just keep eating more fat. And it really was like, it was like carbs were, 
the mm -hmm. evil, the most horrible things. As soon as you eat one, you're going to be fat no matter what, but you can just eat all the fat you want with, and, and, and everything will go your way. And, yep. um, you know, I taught, we taught you, obviously you host what we crave emotional eating summit, which I've been on. And, you know, my audience, hopefully you guys are familiar. It's amazing. It's just so many experts on what we crave talking about emotional eating, but can you share how this experience kind of sort of turned you into an, um, you thought you had an emotional eating problem, but that wasn't necessarily the case. Can you share your experience with that? Yeah. I mean, gosh, do you want me to go back, like back in my, my story, like where the wiring came from and all yeah, that? Let's, let's start, start there. there for okay. Sure. Yeah. Cause this was just, this was so much more than what I thought, um, at the root, it was like a lot of like, I, man, let's go back in time and let's just start. I'll give like the quick, quick and dirty version here. But yeah, um, childhood was, I grew up with an Italian mom, eat whatever you want, eat all the things. Food was love, right? That's first one. Yeah. Then I grew up with about 85% of my diet was processed food, no real food. I thought Costco muffins were real food, right? Like the stuff that we all right. grow up on, right? Never ate healthy whole foods. Um, well, rarely. And when I did, it was like, you know, fried like chimichangas and like pasta <laughs> with stuffed shells. Cause my mom, she's Italian. She makes all, all the right. things. All right. No healthy fats, no vegetables. Salad was like a romaine lettuce with croutons and thousand Island dressing and a slice right. of white bread with fake butter. Wow. Um, then we also had, let's see, fast food was a luxury back then. I was also extremely scrawny and skinny in junior high, and I could never gain weight for basketball. So my dad was always bulking me up all the time. So I was always in a fed state, always, 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 always trying to put me, you know, gain weight. Um, so I wired my brain at a very young age to eat all the time. And, and I, so I was always in a fed state and I could never gain weight because I was so skinny. So I was like, oh, I can eat whatever I want and I won't get fat. Um, so then at like 18 years, you know, college hit, boom, weight gain, freshman 20 to 25, because everything caught up with me. Mm -hmm. But then I was still eating whatever I want. Cause I was like, oh, I'm just finally filling out. And, you know, just, I'm, I'm just finally putting on the muscle that my dad wanted me to have. And then that, you know, again, awareness, which we'll talk about, but then I realized in college, oh, you eat salads and then you can lose weight. So I lost the weight, didn't know anything about fat. That's when I thought fat was bad back then. So for the next 10 years, I was on the dogma of fat is bad, moved to California. I went low fat South beach diet. Um, and that's right when, you know, so fat went like way, way down. And then I started working for a superfood company, which was my first sales job, straight commission, I learned all the things about nutrition and how it's connected to health and cancer and like high vibration and superfood, like is a life changer. So I went super extreme with that. And I lost a bunch of weight and got super skinny because I was basically living off of superfood powder because I didn't have money at the time. I was scared where my next paycheck was coming from. So I did, you know, straight commission sales job. So I was in constant fight or flight, not yeah. knowing if I was going to make rent the next month but I loved it so much. I went all in. I ended up being the number one sales rep and got promoted to national sales manager. And then the fight or flight increased, yeah. right? Can you see all this building? And then I did that for three years, working 12 hours a day, mm -hmm. working out two times a day. And I had an infrared sauna at, at my house. So I was nuking myself just to keep my stress levels down. But, and then I was totally depleting myself of salt and electrolytes and fat. I lost my period for a year. Wow. Um, I was not eating. Yeah. No fault, no fat, no salt, no electrolytes. And I, I remember I would have to pull over on the 405 freeway in the middle of the day, just to take a nap because I would crash like adrenals, okay. electrolytes, everything fat. Like I couldn't even turn on my brain. I was just like, I gotta go right, peace out. Like I would just sleep Wow. on the side of the 405, which is extremely dangerous. I remember I was, I, oh yeah. I was under like five grams of saturated fat a day because wow. I was tracking my stuff. My macros, like track your macros. So I would track them all. And I'd be like, yes. Okay. God. My, my trainer told me fat was bad. So yeah. like, I got to keep it under five grams, you know, 10 grams, whatever. And then this is where things shifted again, more building on all of this. Right. I ended wow. up working a health conference. Um, it was a4m in Las Vegas, like eight years ago. And that's when bulletproof coffee came out. Yeah. And that's when I had my first sip. And that's when I was like, oh my God, all the lights came on and my body woke up and it was like the heavens, you know, parted and the light and the angels came out and like, were <laughs> shining down on me. And I was like, I'm alive. You, I'm had, some alive. Fat. you, you had some something to make cell membranes and brain and hormones and all the things out of you're like, wow, nutrition is amazing. Wow. Look at this. I know. And then Aaron went all on, all in on keto beast mode, you know, like 
I go hard, like my workouts. Right. So right. for a year I was on that bulletproof coffee life. I was like, you guys, everyone needs to know. And I right. never felt better. My brain was so much better, even though I was cranked up on caffeine and that yeah. caused some anxiety, which we'll talk about. Oh, but so I that was the angels, the, the, ca- the angel part <laughs> <for> caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I was like, it's okay. I feel so good. I'm gonna sweep that under the rug. Let's keep cranking on with life. Which then, by the way, we have to yeah. recognize here that, you know, you've basically been in a long-term, uh, like a, a, a prolonged dehydration, yes. right. And now you're adding diuretic coffee on top uh-huh. of it all day long. And you're feeling better in some ways because of the fat that you're finally getting, but from an adrenal standpoint, an electrolyte standpoint, you're just dropping, mm-hmm. dropping, dropping. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It gets better. <laughs> and here we go. Mm-hmm. So next phase of my life. Um, I remember, let's see, um, gosh, at every conference, I remember I was like, bulletproof coffee, snacks, bulletproof snacks, bulletproof burritos. Like, oh my gosh. Like I I was just like, I would never go without bulletproof food because it was keto. Right. So Mm -hmm. anyways, that was right around the time where I started to up-level my career. Um, and I changed jobs and got super passionate, uh, started working for Dr. Pompa. Um, and then I remember that's when I learned about intermittent fasting and fasting and more keto and block fasting And then I got hooked on keto when I would do fasting because I was like, oh my God, I get the brain buzz now. Like, oh my God. And it was like another level of this addiction to like feeling amazing. Okay. So there's, there's another piece. Then we fast forward again. So now I'm intermittent fasting. I'm eating all the things. So, you know, weight gain isn't too bad right now, but then fast forward. Um, I had done side note. I had done, um, so many fasts at this point. So I was getting really good. So it almost became like a healthy eating disorder. We'll come back to that. Yeah. Um, and that's when I learned with Dr. Pompa, like, Oh, you can try grass fed cream in your coffee, some keto, you can do dairy, um, or you can have fermented, like full of fat yogurts, which, you know, um, in this place in California had like these fermented, like full fat dairy, like cream yogurts. And so I would get off a fast and I would eat those. Well, it's full of bacteria. This will come in with my SIBO issue, but I I also was, I was eating that. So I was lots of fat, lots of bacteria. And then shit hit the fan. Literally. I got another job up leveling my career, um, with another company. It was a VP of sales position. I couldn't say no. So I was off to Florida and I'm on the West West coast and I had to fly to Florida every week. And you want to talk about like things blowing up sleep deprivation, um, stress. I literally was, it was the worst train wreck of my life. It was absolute hell. It was the hardest two years of my career because, and I'm an athlete, you can handle the pressure as an athlete. Right. But then, then you add even more stress on top of that. This was also one of my greatest gifts, which will, will, it it all comes around, but I was literally sitting, not only would I fly and be sleep deprived. So I'm waking up at 5am, you know, East coast time, trying to get a workout in that's 2am, you know, like your hunger levels, like ghrelin, like leptin, to everything is just off whack. But then I would get to the office on that, you know, cold brew with cream. And I would sit there and I would try and intermittent fast, even though my stress was so high, it probably wasn't working. And I would sit there and I would be in fight or flight for 12 hours a day sitting like nothing, no movement, no breaks. It was hardcore, like the hardest job ever. Um, but also again, I was choosing it, which we'll talk about. Uh, but you know, that's, and then the company would pay for dinner. Like, let's all go out to dinner. Cause you guys are working till midnight, you know, like I'll treat you to true food kitchen. So I'd be like, hell yeah. So not only would I have four bulletproof bars during the day, all the nut bars, and I would eat those all day because that's, that was healthy. And that was the only thing I had with travel. Then I'd go to true food kitchen and I'd go like, Oh, appetizers. Cause it's healthy. And let's have a glass of organic wine. And then let's have, you know, a cauliflower crust pizza with, you know, or grass fed burger with dessert cause it was healthy. And then I would do that and I'd eat till midnight or I'd eat. And then I'd work till midnight crash, get up at, you know, 5.00 AM Eastern time and do it all over again. And that's where this, this started happening where I just got in this massive hamster wheel. And, um, and then I realized that I was actually just completely numbing out with food and, but I wasn't aware cause it, Oh, it's healthy. So therefore it's okay. And I had so many deeper layers of what I was, what I was doing but, um, you know, just, you get in that, uh, uh, like dogma of, oh, it's a bulletproof life. It's okay. You know, like you don't have to look at your other shit because it's just, it's bulletproof and it's healthy. You know, I could be eating yeah, fast food, but I was right. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're highlighting something really important that I think a lot of people don't understand. And that's, um, that 
your, you know, and especially because intermittent fasting has become so popular. So I always tell people, I'm like, it's very easy for this to trickle into basically like an obesity pattern where you're just not yep. eating all day. And then you're just gorging on food at night. And then you've not, you're not really that hungry in the morning. Cause you just ate a ton of food the night before. And you're like, yay, I'm winning. I didn't eat till two or three o'clock. Like I'm doing great. And then you just gorge all night again. And then that, that's actually a very unhealthy pattern. When we look even from circadian rhythm research that, um, Dr. Sachin Panda is putting out right now that it's actually the timing of your meals has such a big impact on not only body fat, body composition, but also illness. And what we're seeing here, the, what I wanted to highlight is that when we sleep is when your gut heals, you know? And so when we go into sleep with this really full belly, we miss out on that opportunity for that gut healing to be happening overnight while we're sleeping, you know? And so I, I love your story, Erin, cause you're sharing, like I was, you were like, I'm doing everything right. I'm being so healthy. I'm healthy, healthy, healthy and sharing how it led to this place. Okay. So I'll let you continue yes. on. Where yes. No, this? I love it. Keep bringing that. Keep bringing those comments. This is this is so important um, because rarely do we see people like me who are just completely <laughs> embarrassing themselves and like, I want to help people that have struggled with this too, you know? Oh, I, so, um, your story is yeah. so, there's, yeah. millions, there's millions of people there, really, truly. I believe there are millions of people that are like, I went down the same path, you know? So it's helpful because you've come out on the other side. So yes. it's super, super valuable. So, but before we yes. get there, it gets mm -hmm. worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And so um, let's see. So from there, um, this is where, um, I was, I knew I was like, I have to get out of this job. And I did, and I ended up leaving and it was a blessing in disguise. Like again, cause it brought me to the summit. But once I got out of that job, I was like, what the hell am I doing? If I am the healthiest, like healthiest health nut biohacker, like I know all the protocols, I know all the stuff and I am still struggling with it. What is going on in my brain? Like, seriously, it's like, I have this effort moment and I black out. And I was like, okay, I got to educate myself on this because I'm doing, I'm doing this everything right. Technically, even though I wasn't, but I was doing it all right, technically. And I, it was backfiring. So that's when I started filming interviews for the, for what we crave. And that is when then COVID hit and it became the worst epidemic of emotional eating of all time. And I was like, oh my God, this couldn't have been more divinely timed. So I was like, thank you for this opportunity to like learn and like get this out to the world. Um, but yes, there's so many lessons, not only from the physical, like what I was eating, but to the mental emotional. So I can yeah. go through all of those if, if you want me to Yeah, so let's start let, with that. Yeah. Let's dive in. Cause Aaron no longer has a nut, nut gut, we call it, yeah. you know, um, and yeah. you're feeling so much better. And I love what you're saying. This is, this is, you know, um, as my friend that this is a hot spot for me is, yeah in the nutrition world or the health world altogether, there are so many different voices. There are so many opinions and it is so easy to trickle into this space of, I'll just do whatever they say. Yeah. Right. And it's so key that we have this moment where we check with ourselves, how, what results am I getting out of doing what they say? And it doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means it might not be a right fit for you, or it might not be a right fit for you in that part of your life. And so um, I, it's, it's so important. I, I, I can't say this enough that we listen to ourselves and really get real with ourselves about the results that we're getting. Like if your gut health is messed up, if you're can't sleep at night, if you feel freaking crazy all the time, like something's actually wrong and it can get better, you know? And I, as much as I love keto, it is easy to get into a place of high adrenal, um, stress, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if you don't understand that you need salt at a pretty regular pace to help offset that from happening. Um, if you don't understand that you need more magnesium, potassium, it's very easy to become magnesium deficient, especially when you're doing all this extended day fasting, which I love fasting is beautiful, but it, you're exactly right that it has kind of gone overboard. And I remember, um, Rob Wolf talking about this at metabolic health summit, a couple of years ago, like he kind of like dropped the freaking hammer on everybody. And he was like, Hey, you know what? Like maybe we don't all need to be fasting this much all the time and had some really cool evidence to back up why that might not be a wise idea to be like chronically fasting all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know for me, like my hair started getting better and all these things when I stopped fasting so much. So anyway, I appreciate you bringing awareness. Um, so, let's go. Yes. Yeah, so let's the get same. into the mindset component of it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it all starts there, right? So what, what have you learned through this journey? Yes, 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 yes. And I just want to add to that too. Um, I've seen, you know, working with Dr. Pompa and, you know, all over the years, right? Women yeah. who are fasting too much, they're going into early menopause because yeah. their hormones, it's, not, it's too much and they're not adding enough carbs in. 
Yeah, it is. There's so much, there's such a side that we need to talk about. So thank you for, for all the, all the stuff you're going to mention too. Um, and, and what, all real quick, I just want to add yeah. to that the women comment for anybody listening. Yeah. Um, I have an interview with, um, the CEO of, you know, of Prolon fasting. And I was always curious, I was telling you this about this, Aaron, but I was always curious why they have food in it. I'm like, why don't you just do a five day fast? You know, like what, what's the deal? Like why, and why is there crackers and stuff? Like what, what is, what's the science behind that? Cause I knew they had the science. I just didn't, I didn't know what it was. And he said that fasting is really awesome for our cells, for maintaining body composition, but it's very, very stressful on our organs. Right. And so they are basically mitigating over stress of the organs, the way they do it. So like what you're saying there, it's like, when I hear early menopause, all I think is like a lot of organ stress. Right. So yeah. Anyway, thank you for sharing that. Okay. Yeah. Plus too, in. if you're, yeah, if you're just naturally in fight or flight because you don't feel safe in your own body because of your mindset, like I, I, my parents were in scarcity mindset their whole life. And yeah. that, you know, I absorbed that, you know, mindset as a kid, I know uh, just all kinds of stuff that I've discovered over this past year from the summit and just everything that we're doing, yeah, man, like if you, it, you might be fasting, but you might be thinking like, how am I going to get my next paycheck? Like, you're not going to get your results. Like you got to dive deep into that, um, right. into that mindset, which is what I, why I love. You got to talk about all the deep shit that you need to heal. So let's, yeah. let's do that first. Yeah. So, yeah. cause I remember when I was going through it, I was pointing my finger at the boss. I was like, my boss is such a bitch, blah, 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 right. blah, blah. Point, point, point. And I was like, nope, what are you doing in here, girl? Like, and that took me, I literally, I remember when I, when I was like, I got to leave this job and I was craving the mountains and the lakes again. I was like, I got to get back into nature and leave California. So I did. And now I'm in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, where I'm, I'm close to the, the, to that again. And it's literally brought me all the answers and you've, you've helped me with that so much. Um, and with all of our, our journeys and things like that, but, um, it is, it is so much deeper than food. So for me, number one, what I learned was number one, I was, I was unaware. I wasn't even conscious and I didn't want to, it was like, I was in a keto trance. I didn't want to own my, my shit. I was locked in that dogma of like, no, it's this way because I feel so good, but it only works until it doesn't like, like Dr. Pompa says, right. And and to interject real quick right there, Christian Thibodeau, who was also on the show and I, you know, was one of my, what has been one of my main mentors. I love what he, what he says about keto. He's like a lot of what people think is they're feeling so good on keto. These ketones just make me feel so good. He's like, a lot of that is adrenaline. You're feeling, you feel amazing at first because your adrenaline goes up when you go into that state. And again, like, um, Dr. Volick and Dr. Finney have shown that if you, if you have adequate salt intake, you can offset that. But, you know, I wrote about this in my book, like what is the likelihood that you don't know what you're exactly, how much sodium you need throughout the day and in each and every moment. And there's a difference between long-term dehydration and immediate, like I feel thirsty and you don't know when that long-term stuff is happening. And so a lot of what happens as Christian describes is that we go into this super high adrenaline space and that feels really good. That's why people get addicted. I think to stress, you know, and I can relate to where you were at. Cause it was, I've been in that like hyper adrenal overdrive. Like, yeah, I got my shit on lock. I'm going, I'm, I'm building my life. I'm going crazy. And it was like, Whoa, the trance thing you're yeah. talking about. I know uh-huh. what you mean. And what happens is if you stay in that place long enough, then you start to get, you know, high elevated cortisol, you start to become insulin resistant, everything starts to go the opposite direction. But for a minute, it serves us. It's this energy booster. It actually helps us drop body fat, right? Right. So it's like, it it can become easy to be addicted to a hyper stress lifestyle because at first you felt like you were getting so many wins out of it. Like I'm, 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 my brain is on fire. I'm dropping body fat. Right. But it will bite you in the ass in the long run. If you don't get out of it and start to get this healing, right. like Aaron's talking about. And it's really, I, I, I love that you highlighted nature and changing your environment because there's, you know, we were camping in Moab and I remember you saying like that mother nature just holds you like everything is okay out here, you know, and extremely healing. So all right. So what, yeah. what, tell us more about your, yep. your, your mindset healing journey. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was the thing is I, I had to look at myself and be like, where am I feeling unsafe? Because I'm, right. I'm reaching for the food and I'm unaware, like what's going on. So it was a feeling of not feeling safe in my own skin because of my wiring in my brain, which I work with Kat- Catherine Dixon on and a lot of other Angela bell with, with tapping. There's a lot of things we talk about that are solutions to this, but, um, I had to, I wasn't feeling safe. And, and I also lost my joy to myself and my connection to nature and my connection to myself. And I was reaching for food to, to find joy because I love food. So I was finding food and uh, joy in food. And so I kept reaching for it. So that's another thing. But first again, had to become aware. 
and I had to own my shit that I was choosing it. And back then I didn't want to hear that. Even Dr. Pompa said, God, I saw you at these conferences and like, you looked like you were pregnant <laughs> because I did look pregnant. He's like, I didn't want to say anything. I was like, no, I'm so glad you didn't say anything because I needed to go through this yeah. and come out on the other side. That's the only person that could do it. So I had to own my stuff and that yeah. takes some quiet time for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And there was nothing outside myself to point fingers at at the end of the day. It was all internal with the way I handled my stress. I had no boundaries, no self-love. Um, no, um, uh, like there was a major lack of self-care going on because I was like, oh, I just got this VP job and I got to show up and like crush it because if I don't, I'll lose my job again, scarcity, right. And fear and, um, and a self-respect that I didn't have to be like, no, I'm not going to stay up till midnight and work for you. No, I'm going to go to bed and take care of myself. Like I just, I didn't do any of that. I was like, okay, sure. Oh, you, you have 10 more things on my plate. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh, I got this. Cause I'm a badass. Right. And again, it was like, okay, we got to look at that. Um, so again, eating to soothe, uh, denial, um, using it as a crutch. And I just wanted to numb because I was so miserable. I kind of felt like, like Drew Manning a little bit on his last journey where he's like, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm lacking sleep. I can't even think straight. I just need something to like numb right now and like soothe. Like I, you know, there was a piece of me that really, uh, empathized with him on that journey just that emotional, like yuck that he was going through and you get stuck. Cause you don't have the sleep and you don't, and then your hormones are whacked and then you you're hungry all day long. So for me, I was so out of balance Yeah. Uh, not just that, but I got into this cascade where I'm not sleeping. I'm going to eat all the things I eat all the things because I'm not sleeping. And it's just over and over again. And I, again, was just trying to earn, earn my badge of honor, um, and just stay so busy that, you know, I couldn't acknowledge it. And, um, so then, uh, Can we pause right there. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yes. Remember where you were at. I just want to talk about yeah. sleep for a second, because, you know, when you are in a space where you're just beyond stressed out and you're also proving your value, like you say, sleep becomes a waste of time. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and we've seen this over like the last 10 years in the, you know, the, the entrepreneurial, like sleep when I'm dead, I've got to, you know, I'm going to outwork everybody else. That's kind of, and it, we're starting to shift out of that, which is nice, but I cannot emphasize enough the power of sleep. If you are listening to this and you're having mental health issues, regular health issues, you're stressed out all the, all the time. You, you might think you have an emotional eating problem. You might just be sleep deprived. It might be that simple because I've experienced it myself in periods where I was sleeping four and a half hours, five hours a night. And I felt hungry all the time. I felt crazy. And then like just sleeping in and of itself. But I love that you're highlighting yep. the fact that giving yourself the gift of sleep, if you're not giving yourself sleep, it is very likely you may have a worthiness issue yes. that you're trying to prove your value so much that you don't even value yourself enough to get enough sleep at night because you have to prove to everybody that you can be there for them, that you can show up, that you can win, that you can be successful, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And so like, if you can just, I feel like if you can have just enough, like self-love, honestly, to allow yourself to sleep enough, like so many of these problems that start to go away. It is the ma nature and sleep are master healers. So thank you for highlighting that. And I, one last thing is I love yeah. that you said, that like, because you didn't have these other elements of, uh, like a natural lifestyle, like being in nature or having sleep food became this, it was replacing all the, it was the only joy, right? It was the only thing that helped you feel better because everything else in your life was stressful. And I think that's a really amazing point that it's like, it's kind of like, if you don't, if you only have one friend, you're going to lie, re rely really heavily on that one friend. Cause it's the only friend you've got, but if you got 10 friends or four friends, you know, it's kind of. It spaces it out a little bit. So I love that. Oh point. yeah. Oh, not to mention, and you want to get vulnerable, but like I have, this is probably TMI, but I'm going to share it anyways. I don't care. It had been a very long time since I had had sex. And that's another reason why we, <laughs> like, I was just yeah. like, when, cause when you're in a relationship and you are having sex on a yeah. regular basis, your cravings go way down. Cause you're getting the oxytocin and all right. the things. I was, it was a long time. I'm not going to say how long, <laughs> let's just say it was a long time. <laughs> and, and like, I noticed, I was like, holy shit. Like I am reaching for the food for all of these things. I've completely lost myself. Yeah. Um, and I was going to go off of one thing that you said earlier, but I can't remember now, but it's okay. But I well, think even just the human yeah. connection piece, Aaron, of like, just like yeah. touching someone and cuddling and like being, Hugs. having that at night versus like, it's just you and food in an empty stark cold room. You know what I mean? Like it's, it matters. It. Oh yeah. You're in a plane, you're in a hotel room. You're at the office. Like think of how 
gross, like the air you're breathing, the, the, there's no nature, there's no love. And then on top of that, the, the boss and the, and the the deadlines, like it was just, yeah, master disaster. And that was the thing is, um, I interviewed Trisha Nelson for this. She's like, you don't have an eating problem. You have a living problem. Like, where are you off balance? Cause if your whole pie is all work, which mine was, if it's all work and there's no nature, no relationships, no connection, no self-love, like, yeah, good luck with that. Like you got to take inventory your whole life. And I was like, Oh my God, it is all work. It is all work. And so I, that's where the first thing was, is get out of this toxic workspace and then start sleeping. Cause I knew from our experience that sleep is the number one hack. And so that's when I integrated Barton's uh, magnesium, the upgraded formulas of magnesium. I got the deepest sleep of my life. And I was like, Oh my God, I feel like a different person. Like, thank you God for this miracle in my life. Um, so yeah, sleep absolutely game changer. Like Cause yeah, if you don't have sleep, like good luck with any, any other protocol you're doing, it won't work. And also looking at the gut is another one too. You have to fix the gut and this bloating, which I'll show you before and after. Um, yeah, let's talk about this. So this is on my 40th birthday in, uh, a few months ago in Tulum, um, which you were there with me and, uh, yeah, on audio, she's in a really hot, sexy little black dress. <laughs> she looked amazing. I was actually there with her. And in the other picture, you literally look like at least six months pregnant. I know. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy. So this is what sleep and boundaries and all kinds of things will do. Like yeah. literally, I just was like, all right, I got to get, I know my first step you, you do it in this, in the layers that you do it in the time in your life. We're all in seasons. And I was like, all right, first step, get out of here, out of, out of California, get back to the mountains, start sleeping, get a new job. And yeah. then I started doing a few more things, which we can talk about, but that was the beginning of coming out of this. And yeah, it took me like a good two, two and a half years, but, um, th- then I started adding, I took ion gut health regularly, um, which was the major, you know, I also removed the dairy, which was huge, which we can talk about, but I removed the dairy and then I added ion gut health. And that was a huge piece was can fixing you, the gut. Mm-hmm. Can you tell them what gut ion gut health is? Yeah. Or- Yeah. So it's basically long story short, uh, if you know, Dr. Zach Bush, it's his product, but it's basically a massive solution to healing the gut, um, in about 10 different ways. So it's, um, it's this incredible communication signal that's found in 60 million year old soil that you're, when you plug back into that, cause we don't, we don't have the signaling in the soil anymore. If you watch kiss the ground, you'll know what I'm talking about but we don't have any signaling in the soil and the soil is like a supercomputer for our gut. So when you have the signaling for the soil, the whole gut lights up and it's able to function again. So our guts have just been basically offline for 40 years of our life or whatever, however long you've been here. Then when you plug back into this ancient signaling, the whole gut lights up and the innate intelligence turns on and it starts healing. So then you have, it heals the leaks in the gut, which is a big uh, connection to, oh my gosh, so many health issues when your gut's leaking. Um, It also helps protect you against glyphosate, which is another huge reason that we're messed up is because of the toxic overload. It also turns on the function of your neurotransmitters, your mood, uh, detoxification, metabolism, hormones, like uh, mental health, like every single, like the gut is the center of the universe for your health. And if you can get it working, it has a 10 X effect in every other function of of your health. So that's what I'm all about is stacking in, you know, stacking in a way where you get the most benefit. So doing sleep plus ion game changers. Um, and then yeah, got rid of the dairy. Uh, cause finally realized like, Hey, Aaron, like I had to leave California to pull myself away from the dairy. Cause it was so addicting those, uh, fermented yogurts that I had <laughs> and I had to leave California and like cook started, I started cooking from home and I was like, Oh, now I'm losing weight. It's kind of falling yeah. off. This is amazing. Cause I just no yeah. more dairy, no more, uh, bad oils from these restaurants, right. even though I was eating healthy food, like the bad oils and the canola oils that were causing oh. inflammation. You guys should see a picture. My face was so inflamed and stressed. It was terrible. Um, and, and then I stopped eating so much fat. I was like, Oh, I I don't think I need this much. Like all the into intuitive, like I just started listening. I was like, Oh, I'm going to cut out the nuts and the nut butters and just focus on whole food. I'd heard so many people talk about whole food. And I was like, it can't be that easy. That moment, (laughs) that moment right there is the moment I wish for every single person who has been like obsessively listening to podcasts and experts and reading books. And they're just like, that moment where you're like, you know what? I don't think I need that much. Uh, actually, what sounds good to me is this. That moment is huge. That is when you take the freaking power back and you start recognizing, you start seeing these gurus. I hate 
the guru thing. Uh, it's a, it's a yeah. thing for me. Like, because the reason I don't like it is because I believe that we all have divine connection to our own intuition of what is best for yes. us. And when somebody comes at us with a guru mentality of no, 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 no. This is what you need to do. I'm, I'm like, really dude, because every single body has something different going on. And none of us, not a single person on earth even comes close to understanding how the body works. We are not even close. There are so many things that we don't understand. Even Zach Bush admits, like we barely know anything about the gut. And that's why he is just trying to help the gut do its thing, right? Help increase the communication of the cells because we don't freaking know how it works, right? Mm -hmm. So that when we can like start seeing that, yeah, this person might have gone to a lot of schooling, but hey, they might've gotten taken down this road where they believe a lot of things are true that may not really be true or may not be work for me. And we start to look at people as equals on equal playing field of like, thank you for your consideration, but that doesn't work for me. Or that does, I, I tried that. And I don't really like the results I got from that. So I'm going to, you know what? Hey body, what do you need? Mm. What, what sounds good to you? That's healthy. All right. Let me just start trying that. Like that moment you had just cooking in your house in the kitchen is just such a huge moment. I just want to highlight that. Oh, it was. And you know what the beautiful thing is, is it didn't come with me going, I got to figure this out. It was, right. let me just connect with nature and like calm the F down and sleep yep. and like get reconnect to my body. And yep. it just kind of came like, girl, like, look at these people. What are they doing? Oh, like all the dots started connecting finally after I was quiet enough to freaking listen to myself and slow the F down and yep. not kill myself with work. Like I started to just yeah. reconnect and love myself again. And then it was like, Oh girl, like, yeah, no, just, just try eating whole food and getting your fat from the food, like salmon and olives and olive oil. And I was yeah. like, Oh yeah, let's try that. And and then because I didn't have all these healthy restaurants to go to, I was, um, it was kind of like, Oh, I'm cool with this now. Like, it's cool. I, I didn't feel like I was missing anything. I felt even more right. grounded and more right. connected. It was so beautiful. And then the fat just then the weight, like I lost, um, I don't even know. I think it was a 25 or 30 pound weight drop. Um, and, and mind you, let me just rewind real quick because when I was trying to figure this out and I was so the energy was intense when I was still in California, I would, I would have over time, I would like two months, I would do these fasts and then I would eat keto because it's like, Oh, I'm in ketosis. So I need to eat all the fat because you got to keep burning the fat. So you need the fat. And then I would gain the weight back. Cause I had introduced dairy and I was stress eating. Yeah. So I was just eating way too much fat, yeah. which we'll talk about that. But then I would fast it off and, and I would fast for like 15 days. I was like, no, I'm fasting this off. This is, I'm so embarrassed because yeah. I'm in the health space and I should know better. Wow. And I kept doing that and I got in a cycle and, and then, but when I finally just unplugged and just reconnected, that's the method that worked way better than trying to just have this like angry, just right. attitude at myself. Yeah. Yeah. It, it mm. will always bite us in the ass and law. Isn't it crazy yeah. how much letting go can heal yeah. us and get what we actually want. And I, you know, often people, they come at me with this energy on, you know, Instagram or whatnot, where they want, like, how many macros do you eat? Like, yeah. I'm like, girl, I have no freaking idea, dude. I just eat when I'm hungry and I eat real food. Like I, I have no idea. Yeah. I try to prioritize protein and vegetables as much as possible. But like, I mean, I'm sitting here with a freaking thing and nut butter right here. Cause I had a little bit of that between meetings. I'm like, I don't care. Like if it's healthy and um, you know, it, it feels aligned. Maybe sometimes it's not healthy. Maybe sometimes it's freaking M&Ms a little bit or whatever. I don't, I don't stress about it. Right. And I think that the fact that, that I'm like, that is what has allowed yeah. my body to be able to be in a state where it can recover from workouts. I can yep. sleep well. Like it gets so much easier when you let go with a freaking psychotic yeah. white knuckle approach. All it does is make you want to binge on crap. You know, that's one of the reasons I struggle with that bikini competition. Cause I was like, I hadn't been in that space of restriction in so freaking long that I was like, crap, dude, I forgot what it feels like to want to go binge on donuts and stuff right. because I'm just so freaking hungry. And I don't have the correct macronutrients to fuel my brain performance and my like just regular day-to-day -day activities. No wonder my body's craving, you know? And so yep. I love that yep. you, your, your cravings go away when your body is nurtured. It, it, it's nurtured with sleep. It's nurtured with nutrition. It's nurtured with healthy, loving thoughts. It's nurtured with peace, you know, is what you're sharing there. And you lost 25, 30 yeah. pounds in that, you know, yeah. like da, 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 the great surprise, Dude. everybody. Yeah. You know, and I think that's, that's the beautiful thing is they're really, it is so simple if we can just clear away all the clutter and, and reconnect. And that's the thing too, is it, and I, I want to come back to the, um, the, the carbs in your book and all the things, but I just want to share really quickly. I, I had to look at my triggers too, 
I, um, what was triggering me was my own freaking work of like, do I, am I, do I actually have love for myself? Like what the hell is going on? Where did I learn this mentality? Like, wait, 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 hold on. Like you, I had to do some digging on like, I, what, what is it? The root of really, I had to look at my mom's history, my dad's history, my, um, my family's triggers, my, uh, the, the past, my grandparents that were in the freaking world war that, that committed suicide because of scarcity. Like I had to look deep into that stuff. That's where you can pull up some real hardcore stuff. Cause that stuff gets passed down in your DNA and it can get wired in there. And when you're, when I was, uh, when my mom was pregnant with me, I asked her like, what were you going through when you were pregnant with me? Like I was trying to get deep into like, you know, uh, all these things. So that's, that's another whole conversation too, but that is, you have to look at family history. And when you were raised, like, I remember my dad saying things, my mom saying things that that's where I developed that. I don't feel right. safe and I don't, I don't feel held. I don't feel seen. Like it was, that's where it started. Mm-hmm. 100%. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Dr. Bruce yeah. Lipton <laughs> shares that all of our beliefs about life, pretty much all of them are shaped before age six. Right. And so we, what it takes so much, um, courage to be able to admit that you got some stuff going on and that the way you see life right now might not be the most optimal way that things that you just think is just how it is might actually not be how it is. It's just your perception. And when you start changing your lenses, you know, you think of these, like you've got little magic glasses where you can change the color. Everything looks real different when you change from green to pink to purple to blue. Right. And that's how life becomes. We just start seeing it through a different lens. And then all of a sudden our reality is completely converted to something else. And so you're sharing like, yeah, it's, 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 it's tough sometimes to be like, to admit, like, I don't have, I don't think I love myself or I don't think I like, feel safe with money. I have like some major issues here. I need to dive into this. You know, it's, it takes tremendous courage to do that and good on you. And and thank you for like standing as example. And I know you still do your work. You know, you still go to Catherine, you still do your tapping stuff with Angela. And we talk about this often. And so do I, right. I got a session with Catherine next week. Um, but it's, 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 it's such a beautiful process because as you start to pull back these onion layers of all this bullshit that you thought was true about life, that's causing us to be in these like uh, alternate realities that just really suck. And we come back and we restore to peace and just, I'm perfectly good the way I am. What's crazy is like, um, you know, I, I share this often with clients is people think per- I'm perfectly good. The way I am is going to make me turn into some fat inflamed mess who just sits on the TV, watches TV all day and does nothing. If I give myself the gift of being happy with who I am, the freaking opposite happens every time. Like you're a perfect example of that, Aaron. It's just like, you finally were like, dude, I'm freaking good. And the weight just falls off and your skin heals and you make decisions that are in your own best interest and you're thriving in your career, like way more than you were when you were trying to earn it and stress. You know what I mean? Like things are just falling into your lap because you're doing the work of seeing your own value. So beautiful. Yes. Oh my gosh. Preach girl. I know it's so true. And, um, and I know we're not out of time, but I just wanted to add this in too. Um, the one thing that I noticed I was holding on to, right? The one thing, the things you hang on to the most are always the things you need to let go of, right? But I remember that first day that I started adding in back in sweet potato. And I started like, I had like this gorgeous salad with a whole bunch of yummy, like roasted vegetables and sweet potato yeah. and like salmon. And I was like, oh my God, I feel so good with carbs. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. I'm not even hungry. I got the fiber and the yeah. all the things and the and like the balance again of, the whole food and the, and the, and the, the good, healthy carbs. I was like, Oh my God, Um, I was eating so much fat because I was never full because not only the emotional stuff, but like the fat was not filling me up. I needed the fiber and the, and the, the, mm -hmm. all the good stuff that's in the whole food and the sweet potatoes and the healthy carbs. Like I was not getting that. And no wonder I kept, you know, on top of the other stuff, but like, I was always eating fat bombs and that stuff is, you told me this, my, the light went on when you're like, dude, do you guys know that your fat stores are only so much and you get way more with carbs? We, and I wanted you to share that because that's yeah, in sure. your book. And yeah. I was like, that was a huge light on for me. Yeah. 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 I love sharing this. Cause I, it's like finally gets people to eat carbs. Um, and I'm not saying keto doesn't serve its place. It absolutely right. does. It's why I have not thrown the baby out with the bathwater. Keto is an awesome intervention. It's kind of like a pendulum swing for people who need it. If you've been overfed for too long and you're just like insulin resistant and have metabolic syndrome, obesity, there's a bunch of other reasons, or you're like, 
just mildly overweight and you just kind of want to train your body how to really efficiently run off fat source. Cool. Do I think you should stay there forever? For most people, I'm talking like probably like 99% of people. No, I don't. Um, but I do think it's a cool intervention, but what I, what I like to share to get people to, you know, cause often we get this carb phobia, right? It's like carbs are bad. Carbs will make me fat. I mean, this is, I would say if I specialize in one thing, it's, it might be helping people restore their relationship with carbohydrates. Right. Yes. Cause I, I tracked a lot of people on the keto community. Cause they're like, wait, she said I can eat carbs again. Like, okay, what you got girl, what you got, you know? And <laughs> here's how I like to share that message. <laughs> it sends the work. So I think a, a lot of what happens while we get led astray or, you know, we're, we're easily um, susceptible to dogma or, you know, uh, it, it, or gurus is because we don't understand how our body works. And we just assume that they do. And so the, it's like, oh, they said, eat all the fat you want. And I just won't get fat. You're going to take that at face value if you haven't, you know, taken an in-depth biology class, right? Or a human nutrition class. So here's how it works. You eat carbs. You're, when you eat carbohydrates, you have a tremendous middleman between eating the carbs and body fat storage. And this is what nobody freaking talks about in the keto community. When you eat, and those, those, those middlemen are your liver and your muscles. So your muscles can store anywhere from on average, like 300 up to like a, 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 an elite athlete with lots of muscle, 800 grams of carbohydrates in your muscles and liver. No, that's just in your muscles. Then you get another, God, I, sorry, I should have looked this up in my book. I think it's like another 200 or two. I can't remember the number, but you get, you can get upwards of 800 to a thousand calorie or, or grams of carbohydrates, sorry, stored in your muscles and liver before any of that goes into body fat. Now it depends if you don't have a lot of muscle mass or whatnot, like maybe that's, you know, 400 for you, right. but 400 grams of carbs, people right? That's how much you can store in your muscles and liver. You're, you're fat. When you eat fat, you don't have a middleman. You, whatever you use right then for like your brain, some hormones, you know, making cell membranes, some basic functions in the body, you, your body doesn't want to store fat in your liver or your muscles. That's fatty liver or, you know, having fat in your muscles as a sign of metabolic disease. So guess where it goes? If you eat more than you need at one time, straight to fat stores. And guess what else is interesting? And I share all this in detail with my book. I need to like memorize these numbers. <laughs> Thanks for the practice the run, Aaron. But, yeah. um, when you, when you, um, uh, have to convert carbohydrates into, the stored form of fat, it actually takes, uh, burns a lot of calories to be able to do that. It's, it takes 10 times more calories for your body to turn carbohydrates into fat stores than it does dietary fat. Right. So like, think about that, you know what I mean? And so people are just like, you eat carbs, you get fat. Okay. Listen, if you're diabetic or you're really insulin resistant, then yeah, like your body is having a hard time putting those carbohydrates in your muscle cells. So they, you, more of it might go to, to body fat, but in a normal, most people's body in a normal body, I say carbohydrates are less likely to make you fat, especially if you're training and you're getting your ass in the gym and you're pushing, you're pumping out that stored carbohydrate into your bloodstream to use for activity. Guess what? Now you got empty sponges just waiting for more carbohydrates. And people live in this delusional world where they think the moment they put a carbohydrate in their mouth, it's going straight to their fat source. It is not true. It is an excess of either fat or carbs that causes you to get fat an excess, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to eat carbs, go train like a badass and enjoy your damn sweet potatoes and your salad or your egg scramble or whatever is yeah. not going to make you fat, you know? And so this is something I'm really passionate about because I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm literally like, I see, I saw a prominent keto doctor the other day telling people, telling people that carbohydrates dictate to your body to store toxins in your fat. And it doesn't matter if it's quinoa or cake, all carbs make you fat. And I was like, listen, mother, I, mean, yeah. I, was, I was mad. I, it makes me mad because you know why? Yeah. Because two years later, after people get wrecked and have eating disorders, yeah. I have to, I have to help heal that. So yeah. it makes me, it does. It makes me mad. And that's why I'm speaking up about it because there's, there's a place for keto it's cool, but we cannot be in this energy of carbs, all carbs inflame you, all carbs make you fat, carbs are the devil. It is, if anybody's telling you that, like I would seriously consider 
branching out and looking at some other opinions because it is, it's just not true. And it, it, it's, it's quite frustrating. So thank you for letting oh, me. Oh yeah. No. Off. And that's, I, I want to emphasize that because I'm like, God, if I would have had your book a long time ago, <laughs> that would have <laughs> saved me some trouble, but I'm so glad, obviously I, I was on my own journey and it led to the summit, which is awesome. But I'm like, people need to know that they need to know that. Cause if I, once I knew that I was like, Oh, you mean I can't eat all the fat and then, Oh, I just got to watch it and monitor it and maybe not eat so much. Okay. Like it is such a simple thing. It makes so much sense. And yeah, people aren't talking about it. Cause again, we're trapped in the dogma, but it, Oh, it is so freeing. So thank you for, you are like literally the pioneer into, I feel like it's okay to eat carbs and it's like, look at it this way. Look at it this way. Look at it this way. So I'm, I'm thank stoked you. and so grateful to have you. Cause you were the one that should, you were the foundation of that for me. So thank you for everything that you've done for me to pull me out of this mess and, or help me, you know, and yeah. just get where I need to go, man. You're going to help so many people with this book. I am just, I'm like, everyone needs to know this. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, guys, the name of the book is short-term keto. It comes out on December 21st, but it's on um, Amazon Barnes and Noble right now. But yeah, short-term keto mean that's my, it's my way of saying like keto is still cool, most right. people do not do it, need to do it forever. And I really don't recommend it. I really don't. Um, if you just feel better, maybe you got something going on. You have traumatic brain injury or you, or you have like really high inflammation and it's just, you right. know, if you feel like it's, it's going to be obvious if, if you're like, no dude, for sure. Like I feel at peace. I feel good, but make sure you don't get caught in the trap that Aaron got caught in. And a lot of people get caught in where it's like, no, 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 I do feel good. And you like, you really take a step back and look at your life and you're a freaking mess. And you're like super high anxiety. That's the thing I would look for. And I do talk about that in the book too, is like the impact of, of keto on neurotransmitters. People need to understand this. Like it, 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 I saw an article on psychology today of a therapist that was like really concerned about the keto diet. Cause she's like, dude, people don't understand. Like your serotonin's dropping, your dopamine's going up. Like it has an impact on GABA. It, it impacts your mental health. And so I go into all the details of that on the book. So yes. in the book. So yeah, it's, it, thank you for sharing that. Cause it's, it was scary. And yeah, when yeah. I, I, 2018 was when I started saying, I don't think people should do keto forever. And I didn't know anybody else saying that at the time I was friends with all the leaders of the keto community. I was like, shit, dude, I'm going to get like blasted. I'm going to get like mocked. I'm going to get kicked out of the keto world. Like, I, but I don't care. I just speak the truth, my truth. Cause I'm seeing all these like manic perimenopausal women that are just like a freaking mess. They're, they were kind of like where you were, obviously you weren't perimenopausal, but they were in the, they're in this like they're afraid to eat freaking stuff that has natural flavors in there. Like they're afraid to eat everything. Mm -hmm. It's a fear-based mindset. Everything's going to hurt me. Everything's going to hurt me. And it's just horrible and I can't stand it. So yeah, I had to speak up. <laughs> I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad you, thank you for having me on and just to talk about this. Cause it's, it's so important. And I just, I just want to help anybody I can to get this information out and just like, you know, oh gosh, it's so freeing once you can get on the other side. So yeah, thank you for yeah. that. And and Aaron, real quick, uh, mm -hmm. what we crave. How yes. tell us about it real quick and where yeah. they can get info. Yeah, it's free. It starts November 2nd. Um, you can put a link in the show notes. But yeah, basically it's just it's like almost 50 experts that, and real life stories that talk about emotional eating, what's at the root and what yeah. are we really craving? Like all the things we talked about it, but a lot deeper, you know, yeah. and just all the experts and personal stories that are it's just not what you think. It's always something deeper. So yeah. yeah. Aaron a second. Her, if you didn't notice, Aaron has a work ethic. She took that work ethic and she built something really awesome. What we crave. So if you're, it's not even just about emotional eating, in my opinion, it's like, right. you want to understand health at a deep level and understand yeah. all these things that impact our mood and our hunger levels and how the body works really. Like it's a really awesome resource for that. So yeah, we will yeah. definitely link that in the show notes and Aaron, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I love talking to you. I could do it all day. I know. I love you too, girl. Thank you so much. You're just oh, so good. Thank you for everything. Thank you.